Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and this is Stew's News, a review of American high-speed rail happenings over the past month. In this March 2024 episode, we'll take a look at what went down in February. California High Speed Rail captures the news of the month with their release of the 2024 draft business plan. The business plan is a biannual mandated update for the California legislature and public on the state of the project and future direction. Public comment extends to April, so get in there and add to public record. Plenty to unpack here, let's check it out. Here we see a new dubious cost of equivalent capacity. They now have that at double the cost of high-speed rail. If we look at the same chart from the 2022 business plan, the equivalent capacity cost has gone up 38%, but the California high-speed rail cost is only up 14? How? Because they're hiding the true cost of the project. Apply that same inflation to California high-speed rail and you get $128 billion. More evidence that they're doing this. The 2024 project cost estimate is the same as it is in the 2023 update. So they're perfect estimators now? No, they admit that they only update costs on sections when they reach design and engineering milestones, not yearly and accounting for unanticipated inflation. If you look at differences between 2022 and 2024, costs of some sections have gone up massively, while others sit idle, ready to give you a surprise. Some increases coming are also buried in the report, but are not reflected in the more visible charts. Basic conclusion, cost is going up by another $9 billion on Palmdale to Anaheim, but they're still not owning up to inflation past 2034. The inspector general wasn't a fan of this non-linear cost estimation update and called the authority out on it. The authority's response? Sure, we'll work on your suggestions in the next business plan. In other words, go pound sand for two years, Mr. Inspector General. In the last Stu's News, we talked about updated ridership projections. They are projecting more riders in the Central Valley now and fewer for overall phase one, Los Angeles to San Francisco. According to the report, they're using a new, more robust model that represents the overall state rail network in greater detail. This might explain the difference, but we won't be able to get a full explanation until the final 2024 business plan is published. I thought this was a nice pie chart, illustrates just how close they are to finalizing right-of-way parcel acquisition. It's also nice to know that for the Merced and Bakersfield extensions, they are starting this process early so they don't end up finalizing right-of-way parcel acquisition 85% of the way toward finalizing construction on those sections. More charts. Construction package one structures a little more than half complete. CPs two, three structures a little less than half complete, but a lot of green on both of those. The 2024 business plan also includes some new station renders. It looks like we've ditched the fold-out paper party favor look for 90s mall, community college admin building, and decade-old Indian casino. Great. Really inspiring. Speaking of inspiring, check out this graphic here. Ah, now I understand how that early operating segment business model works. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's move on to the Finance and Audit Committee reports. Capital outlay budget summary. Expenditures as expected. Not a great month, but not a bad month at $138.9 million expended. Design build expenditures mediocre at $87 million. Risk contingency down $133 million. That looks like it's due to $131 million in change orders on CPs 2-3. Over the past 10 months, they have averaged $94 million a month in contingency drawdown, which gives them about a year before they go over budget again. Daily labor construction force looking strong, still in the 1400s. Construction progress, no big jump like we were anticipating last month. Actually, no jump at all. These stats are unchanged from November's data. Keep in mind, these reports run two months behind, and we are currently looking at data from December 2023. CP1 earned value chart, still a tiny bit behind, but keeping pace with forecast. 
No CP4 chart, but we can see completion there is forecast for last month, January 2024. Let's compare that to this chart I found on the 2022 business plan where that was predicted to be done by March 2023. <sighs> Cost then predicted at 679 million, looks like it will finalize around 785 million. Also, look at that original completion date, June of 2019. Holy smokes. Let's move on to the February board meeting. Looks like the board will approve a notice to proceed to for the locally generated alternative for the Bakersfield station and approach from the north. That will allow the authority to advance to 100% design and do other early work on this section. Foster and Partners and Erup were set to give a presentation about Central Valley Station design specifics. This document is a doozy. There is too much to go over here in addition to the 2024 business plan. I'll make a video specifically for this in a few days. More PowerPoint, this time for interior design. Finalizing guidelines this year then looks like development next year before they start procuring train sets. Some interesting pictures in this, like what appears to be two by three opposing seating rooms. Also an enormous toilet area that could double as a small apartment. Everything is designed to be freely at level wheelchair accessible. The enormous toilets were well liked. So was the absurd antisocial cocoon seating concept. Keep in mind, you'll be on this thing for two hours if you're lucky. And those things will probably be five times as expensive as coach. In the CEO report, you have 150 million in change orders incoming, so look out below risk contingency pot. Wow, that was a lot, but we're finally done with California High Speed Rail. Let's move on to Brightline West. More preliminary field work along Interstate 15 in both California and Nevada. Most of that completed already, but some extending into March. The president of Brightline West, Sarah Watterson, gave a presentation to the Nevada Department of Transportation Board of Directors at their February 12th meeting. Not much new, but I have a few interesting images and sound bites. First in this graphic, initial procurement will be for 10 train sets. Um, so all the civil highway work will be done by civil folks and split across um, four, pro four project packages uh, between here and California. And we layer those in and then we run the trains where we're in finalizing stages of a procurement between two train manufacturers. Now, our trains that we're building, they're not brand new trains. We're bringing over trains that have done tens of billions of miles um, from Europe predominantly and bringing them over here and making Americanized changes is what I would say to make the trains used here. And so we're bringing existing proven technology. Interpret those sound bites how you will, but to me that sounds like they won't be using Alstom Avelias or Siemens Valaro Novos, but possibly slightly older models like the Alstom AGV or Siemens Valaro. Still keeping a tangential eye on Brightline's plans for a Tampa extension. The plan to set aside 44 feet of the I-4 corridor for rail was shelved in a Florida Senate committee. The Florida legislature also has taken a pass on $50 million in state funds to support I-4 rail improvements. So it looks like this issue is probably going bye-bye for this year. Brightline seems to have bigger fish to fry right now anyway. Bye-bye. That does it for Brightline, let's move on to Acela and the NEC. Alstom announced the delivery of their 11th Avelia Liberty and Amtrak quickly put it to work nosing an old Amfleet passenger car to Philadelphia. New Jersey Transit released a time-lapse video of the year-over-year -year progress for the Portal North Bridge in Kearney, New Jersey. Link in the card above. It's only two minutes, pretty interesting, check it out. One of two new platforms meant for use with Acela service at Baltimore Penn Station has finished construction and will open to service in the spring, according to Amtrak. The second platform should be ready by fall of this year, 2024. Amtrak announced the start of initial demolition on the Frederick Douglass Tunnel, also in Baltimore. This will replace the Civil War era B&O tunnel there that is one of the worst bottlenecks on the NEC. Major construction on the Frederick Douglass Tunnel is anticipated to start later this year and complete in 2035. Now let's look at the Amtrak numbers. Revenue and operating profit down compared to November 2023. 
with the exception of a seller revenue, which was up three and a half percent. Keep in mind, these numbers run two months behind and are for December 2023. This is to be expected as usage of Amtrak services on the NEC is somewhat seasonal. However, comparing year over year, not all of the numbers are as impressive as they have been other months of this fiscal year. Acela again the exception with a huge 24% jump in revenue from fiscal year 2023, operating profit down though. NEC regional less impressive with a 5.5% revenue increase and operating profit off 16%. That held overall Amtrak NEC numbers back slightly at a 4.4% increase in revenue and a 16% drop in operating profit year over year. Ridership remains strong, however, still cruising at a 20% increase over last year so far this fiscal year. That's enough NEC, let's quickly check out what's happening with Dallas-Fort Worth high-speed transportation. Looks like the North Central Texas Council of Governments is pressuring Dallas slightly to get on board with the project. Dallas politicians have some reservations about station locations on their end. NCT COG is attempting to attach funding for various Dallas station area related projects to agreements on DFW HST. Looks like NCT COG is motivated to get this high speed rail project up and running. Dallas, not so much. We'll see how that shakes out. And now it's time for Stu's Boo Boos, where we take a look at everything I missed last month. What's this? No Boo Boos. That means no gold star for you, and I get a silver star. That brings your gold star total to nine. I finally ditch the lone star and lay the smack down with two. As always, if you find a boo-boo in this presentation, let me know in the comments. If it's a good one, you win a prize. More special thanks to the Lucid Group Discord channel for their input and help. If you'd like to join our Motley crew, check out the link in the description. Let me know what you thought about the news in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. Up next, more Federal Railroad Administration high-speed rail corridor action with the Northern New England Corridor. Also look for more of your favorite channel series, now jam-packed with 3D visuals. And of course, wander back into town on the last Friday of the month for another Stew's News. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.